Hello everyone and welcome to another Looker Studio tutorial. Today we're going to create an SEO report from scratch. We're going to learn how to create a search console report through Looker Studio from A to Z. So stay with me and you can follow my steps and create your search console report. Before we go straight to the point, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps tremendously to create new content, so thank you very much in advance. And off we go. Step number one, you're going to go to lookerstudio.google.com. From here, we're going to create a new report. So we're going to click on blank report. Once we click on blank report, then we need to select the search console as a data source. So when this little screen pops up, Either you're going to scroll and find Search Console or with the search bar, we're going to type Search Console and we're going to select Search Console here. What we need to do here is to select our website. So under Sites, you need to select the site that you need to create this report for. Of course, in order to do that, you need to have access to Google Search Console. Under Tables, you need to, create, to select Site Impression. And then under search type, you need to select web. So select site impression and web with this configuration, the data in Google Search Console will match exactly the data in Looker Studio. Select your website, site impression, web, and now we're going to click on add to add this data source to our Looker Studio report. So we're going to add our data source. We're going to apply here. And the system will create a new Looker Studio report. There's going to be a table here. Most likely we don't need it, so I'm going to remove it. And let's get started with building this report. I'm going to take everything from the very beginning. If you have some experience with Looker Studio, you may want to actually move a little bit further ahead. But let's start with giving our report a name. So from the top left, we're going to come here where it says Untitled Report. We're going to call our report Test. SEO report. Then we're going to click on insert and we are going to add a header for our report. So we're going to scroll down and select a rectangle. I'm going to form a rectangle in my screen. I'm going to position it on the top of my page. And once I'm happy with the positioning, then I'm going to go on the right hand side and I'm going to change the color to a color that I like. Now I'm going to click on insert again. I'm going to scroll down and select text. And I'm going to add some text, which is going to be the header of our report. I'm going to say test SEO report. I'm going to customize also this text. So I'm going to select it from the right hand side. I'm going to make the letters white. I'm going to make the letters bigger. I'm going to align them to the center. I'm going to also make them bold. And that's the header of my report. Let's add a logo also. So let's say we are an agency or we are a big brand and we want to make it branded. We're going to click on insert. We're going to select image. So we're going to add our logo here. And now that I added this placeholder, I'm going to go to the right hand side, select file. I'm going to select the logo and voila, we have our logo here. One more thing that is a must have in any report is a date range. So I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to click on date range control and I'm going to drop it here. So now I have a date range control. And from style, I'm going to make this white and I'm going to make the letters a little bit bigger here. So we have a date range that we can use to change the dates. Now that we did a little bit of pre-work, Let's start building the report. There are four metrics that matter in SEO, impressions, clicks, click-through rate, average position. So let's start with inserting those. We're going to click on insert. We're going to select a scorecard. So the first scorecard is going to go here. From the right-hand side, we are going to select impressions. Now, what I can do is I can do Control c Control v or Command C, Command V for those of you who are using Mac, or right click, copy, right click, paste to create essentially another three scorecards. So we have in total four. I'm going to grab all of them. I'm going to align them nicely in the middle of my report. 
the first one is going to be impressions that's already configured the second one i'm going to select from the right hand side i'm going to select clicks so here either you select the scorecard and then you can click on metric and you can find the metric you would like through this list or you are going to start typing here in the search bar and you're going to select the metric you like so let's select for example here click through rate and for this one i'm going to select my average position so i have impressions clicks click through rate average position for my website one more thing we're going to do now we're going to grab all these four scorecards and here that says comparison date range we're going to click in this drop down that says none we're going to click on the second drop down that says none again and we're going to select previous period and we're going to click on apply so now you see some indicators we compare the performance of our website with the previous period which means if here i'm looking at let's say last quarter the system will compare with the previous quarter and the indicators will change if i select a different date range for example this year the system will compare with the previous year if i select this month the system will compare with the previous month so whatever the date range the system will always compare with the previous period so now that we selected last month the system will compare with the month before this is what comparison with previous period means if you want to do it individually also you can do it very easily you can click on the scorecard you scroll down you see here comparison date range you click here you select previous period and you apply right so that's super easy let's now select some charts and create some charts here that will reveal the performance of this website over time there are many ways to create a report now in terms of the selection of the charts i'll present what i feel is going to be the most useful type of chart to include here in your seo report so we're going to click on insert and i'm going to add a combo chart i'm going to drop it here in this combo chart combo chart is a chart with two metrics the first metric that we are going to have here is clicks the second metric that we're going to include is average position and the dimension here is not going to be google property it's going to be date now if we are to to go and look into let's say this year to date performance after this configuration so this year to date and click on apply you're going to see that this chart now will expand and will basically report on clicks and average position over time there are a couple of things that we need to configure now here for this chart to be correct the first thing that we need to do even as my report is loading here is to select this chart and go where it says sort here and i want to sort not by clicks but i want to sort by date and i want to sort by date in an ascending order ascending order means from january all the way to december right so now you can see here this line represents the clicks and then this column here represents average position still it doesn't really look that great so once we sort everything nicely we're going to go to style and we are going to say that the clicks i want them to be bars and i want them to be measured on the left axis and under series number two the average position i want it to be a line and i also want it to be measured on the right axis so here you can see the clicks and average position over time and you can see the story basically of the performance of this website so this website was going very well this is a test website is all ai generated then it got hit by the update of google and when it got hit clicks actually went down and the average position deteriorated so it went up so everything is very clear here when you have this chart clicks over average position by date now personal opinion i don't like the grid lines so i want to remove them so if you select the chart you can go under style you can scroll down you will find grid at some point 
you can click here and you can remove the grid line. So now it looks a lot cleaner. So this is the first chart that I like to have. And sometimes it even makes sense actually to have here this chart occupying the entire screen. So you can get a sense of the performance of your website as you access this report over time and how things are moving. What else are we going to include in this report now? At this stage, let's add a couple of filters. So I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to add a drop down list filter. I'm going to drop it here. And this filter, I'm going to click here and I'm going to select country. I'm going to change the metric to clicks here. And now how this works is that we have the performance of, of our website over time. I can click on the country filter and I can select different countries. For example, only Nigeria, only United Kingdom, only United States. So I can narrow down to country performance. So this is a very useful filter to have for your report. What else do you need to include as a filter? Either we're going to copy this drop-down list or let's actually do this job one more time. Click on insert. We're going to add another drop down list here. And let's add another filter. This time we're going to go on the right hand side and we're going to say device category here. So not only I can filter by country now, but I can also filter by mobile desktop tablet. And let's add another filter. This time I'm just going to copy paste this one. Control C, Control V. And this filter is going to be by query. So if I want, I can go and I can use these filters. And I can say, let's say I want to have a look at my website's performance this year to date, only for, let's say, United Kingdom, only for mobile, and only for specific keywords, for example. Right? So you can have these selectors on the top, and you can customize your SEO report to your liking, right? So that's very, very useful selectors that you can have. Now, let me beautify the report a little bit. Since we have maybe these three selectors here, let's actually bring the date range further down and maybe style it again back to black. Make everything, let's say, kind of similar in terms of the fonts. So now here I have all my selectors under my header, query, device, country, date, range, so I can actually filter my performance. Now let's add a couple more things here. We run out of space, so we need to include more space. So we're going to click on page, current page settings, go to style, and let's add 3000 pixels here. So now we have a lot more space to play. What I'm going to do here, is I'm going to insert a table to begin with here and this is going to be query performance a lot of you like to have this table the dimension here is going to be query query means the keywords and then in terms of the metrics we're going to add all of them for example we're going to have impressions we're going to have clicks we are going to have click through rate and we are also going to have average position, right? So here we have a table that is going to showcase the performance of queries, essentially different keywords for whatever date range we select. How can we customize this table now to be a little bit better when it comes to analyzing our data? First of all, I'm going to sort everything by clicks. So I'm going to come here under sort and I'm going to sort everything by clicks. Second thing I'm going to do, under the number of rows here, under pagination, I'm going to come here and I'm going to say I want only 20 entries. So this is going to be a table that is going to showcase the top 20 queries. And if, for example, I want to also see the performance of these queries in relation to the total, I'm going to click here, summary row. Again, we're under the setup column, and now I'm going to have my summary row. So these are my top 20 queries. What I like to do here is 
I'm going to copy the header. I'm going to drop it basically on top of this table. And I like also to have some labels for my report, right? So now this is not going to be the most beautiful report you've ever seen. But the idea here is that we are going to come and we are going to have some labels. So the, the user, the stakeholders are going to use this report. They know, for example, that under this table, they're going to see the top 20 query queries performance. So here we have the top 20, not top 10, top 20 queries performance. Now, couple more things you can do with tables. I'm going to click on this table and I'm going to convert into a heat map. So I'm going to go on the right hand side under chart. I'm going to select the third option and I'm going to convert this into a heat map. If you want to change the colors of the heat map, under style, you're going to scroll down here and you can actually find this blue you can change it to orange for example or to any color that you like so in my case i'm just going to change everything to to the same color so that everything is consistent when it comes here to the heat map so now it is easier to understand which query has the highest impressions clicks click the rate average position and so forth so now we have a table basically here that is going to report only on the top 20 queries what happened here to the pagination we did select top 20 now we did so this is the table that show us the top 20 queries in case you want to only see which keywords are ranking the highest let's say on on uh, the first google positions so then you can select your table when it comes to sort here instead of clicks you can say i want to sort by average position in a ascending order this time so from the lowest to the highest the lowest it means number one to the highest but it makes a lot more sense actually to sort by clicks in a descending order right so that's going to give you a lot more insights to understand which queries are giving you the most clicks Okay, and that's the basic configuration of your Search Console SEO report. So here we have a report that allows us to filter by date. It allows us also to filter by query. It allows us to filter by device category. It allows us to filter by country. We have the top level performance of our website. We have a chart here that showcases a website performance when it comes to clicks and average position over time. And we have a table here that is showcasing the top 20 queries and all the corresponding metrics, impressions, clicks, click rate, average position. If you want to share this report now, there are a couple of options. Option number one, you're going to go on the top right, you're going to click on share, and you are going to give access to specific email addresses. So here you're going to give access to specific email addresses, you can have them as editors or viewers and you can share the link to this report option number two you can make this link public same drill you come here to share you are going to change this from restricted to public you are going to save you are going to copy the link and then you're going to give the link to your uh, stakeholders option Number three, you're going to come on the top right. You're going to click on the drop down menu next to the share button. You're going to download the report. You can download this page as a PDF. You can send it then from there through email to your stakeholders. And yet another option, you can schedule this report to go on a monthly basis to your stakeholders. Go on top, click on the drop down menu, then click on download. Go on top, click on the drop down menu then you are going to say here schedule delivery and you are going to include the emails you are going to include basically here the particulars on how often you want to schedule this report and you are going to click save and that's how easy it is to create a very simple but very informative search engine optimization report through looker studio let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day in any time zone.